Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Ahabati fillah Countless, countless times we've talked about the issue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raising above his throne subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner that suits his majesty and it always it is a continual controversy in dealing with especially Asha'ira and those people who whose creed is derived from the Jahamiya and the Murtazila and some of the other early sects of Islam who have no basis in Kitab Allah wa la Sunnat Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but still you have people in 2014 going into 2015 who still uphold this creed still attack and slander Ahlus Sunnah and it's la yadurhum because the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said la tazal taifatu min ummati dhahirin al haqq hatta la hatta yatihum amr Allah wa hum ala dhalik wa qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la tazal taifatu min ummati dhahirin al haqq la yadurhum man khalafuhum wala man kadha wala man khadhalahum hatta tukum as-sa' the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ahlus sunnah he said, There won't cease to be a group from my nation on the truth. No one will harm them, even though they differ with them, and try to harm them until the hour is established. So Ahl Sunnah and the creed of Ahl Sunnah will remain. So it doesn't affect and harm Ahl Sunnah when the people make ta'an, when they speak ill of Ahl Sunnah and the scholars of Ahl Sunnah, when they slander him into Imiya and say he's. Uh, mujazzama, mujazzama, and all, all these other uh, lies and slanders. They, they don't harm the honor of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. In fact, his books are still uh, alive with us. Sheikh al-Islam, rahmatullahi alayhi, rahmatullahi wasiyah, he was Sheikh al-Islam. Even his detractors referred to him as Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Even those people who hated him referred to him as Sheikh al-Islam because of his manzil in the deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a high status to be remembered amongst the people for upholding Kitab Allah wa Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. So you're not able to harm him no matter what you say. As far as Ahl Sunnah and Salafis being uh, less, I don't see this because and maybe my view might not be the most accurate view, but what I can say as long as I've been Salafi, go after my trip to Yemen, 1997, sitting with Alama bin Mukbil bin Hadi al Wadi'i, Allah yirhamuhu. And since then, I've seen so many more people, it's become a trend for many Muslims to claim they're Salafi. Although not everyone is Salafi, those, it has to do with adhering to the Quran and the Sunnah and those principles and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. So that's what it means to be Salafi. So what I've seen personally is that the Dawah, due to the internet and more and more students of knowledge coming back from Yemen, coming back from Saudi Arabia, coming back from Egypt, coming back from Mauritania and other places, spreading Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, according to the understanding of the Salaf, I've seen it spread. Now we have huge, uh, very large Salafi communities, although there are people, of course, who've scared people away from the Dawah, but this is not the time and place in order to, to speak about that. The point being is the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah is alive and well and it's growing. Yemen has transformed in many places of Yemen where there's Marrakis of Sunnah all over Yemen. In Sana'a, there was in Damaj in the north in Sa'ada, there was in Hadramaut, in Sheh there is in Hadramaut in Sheher, and I've been there, I lived there. There is in Aden, uh, I, I visited there countless times in Fiyush. Uh, there is in Hodeida, there is in Ma'bar. So Ahl Sunnah Mawjud and the Dawah is constantly spreading. As far as being Madkhali and Wahhabi and all of these uh, names which people use, uh, I don't know anybody who adheres to those names, nor am I going to entertain those, uh, the waste of time. As far as saying Sheikh al-Islam holds these views, Sheikh al-Islam, he said, here's what he said in his treatise, Aqidi Tawasati, and you'll find all of his treatises, of course, in Majmu'a Fatawa. Sheikh al-Islam, he said, uh, in talking about the creed of Ahl Sunnah, he spoke about the six pillars of Iman, and the first pillar of Iman being in accordance with the Hadith of Jibreel, and tu'minu billahi, and tu'minu billahi wal malaikati wa kutubi wa rasuli wa liyum al wa tu'minu bi qadri khayri wa shaf. So he said, and tu'minu billah. He said, and Iman billah, wa min al-Iman billah al-Iman. 
بما وصف به نفسه في كتابه. It is having iman, believing, having faith, firm faith in what Allah, how Allah has described Himself in His book في كتابه. Because we believe that the Quran is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and that it is it is perfect. It is revelation. It is the book of Allah. Is it a speech? It is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we believe is Ahlul Sunnah. This is what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah believed. And this is what the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who received the wahi believed and propagated for us. And this is why we adhere to that creed. He said, Iman bima wasafa bihi nafsuhu fi kitabihi. Wa bima wasafuhu bihi rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi ghayra tahrif wa la ta'teel. Women, ghayra takayb, wala tamthil. So this is what the aqid of Ahlul Sunnah is that we believe in uh, the the uh, uh, we believe in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, how He described Himself and how the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described Him in the authentic ahadith. And we do not ask how. So Ahlul Sunnah, we don't ask how. We don't say, oh, that if you say this, it means you've given him a, a direction, and it means you made him like humanity, and you made him like this animal, and you, we, don't, we don't even go into that. Ahlul Sunnah, we say, be like to cave. This is what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, so don't lie about him. Then he said, غير تكيف ولا تمثيل. And he said, without making a likeness. We also don't make a likeness between our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And with that, we don't describe him except by his divine names and attributes that he described himself with in Kitabillah, in the, in the Quran. And in the authentic sunnah, because we believe the sunnah of the Prophet is wahi as well. This is how we describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahman ala ars istawa, the most merciful, rose above his throne. Okay? We believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that all throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, ar-Rahman ala ars istawa. The most merciful rose above his throne. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fi kitab al-kareem, Inna rabbukum Allah alladhi khalaqa samawati wal ard, fi sitati ayam, thumma istawa ala ar arsh. Allah said this about himself. He said, Verily, your Lord, Allah, he he created the heavens, uh, the he heavens and the earth in six days. Then he rose above his throne. Allah said it about himself. I don't dispute it. I don't ask how. I accept it because it's the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We uh, give full reverence and respect to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe in it. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by it. We believe it is his divine speech. And we don't describe a way, describe it away, say it, it needs to fit our intellect like this. It needs to fit our intellect like this. It means this. It means that. No, we go with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it in seven different places in the Quran. That's the second ayah we mentioned. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ اللَّهُ الَّذِي رَفَى السَّمَوَاتِ بِغَيْرِ عَمْدٍ تَرَوْنَهَا ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى عَرْشِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised the heavens. Without any pillars, without any foundation or pillars that you can see, then he rose above the throne. Allah rose above the throne. We accept it. We don't say that means he's uh, in this direction, he's in that direction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we affirm. Allah has, uh, uh, one of his, his characteristics is, and this is from his sifat fi'liyah, you know, his, 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 his actions or his characteristics, which have to do with actions, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne. We believe that. Allah rose above his throne. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us, he said in Surah Taha, Ar-Rahman ala ar the most merciful, rose above his throne. That is how many ayats so far? One, two, three, four. That's four ayats. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fi kitab, fi kitab al-Kareem, bi Surah uh, Furqan. Qala subhana, then he rose above the throne, Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman rose above his throne. Allah said it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to say and negate a direction for himself, he could have negated direction for himself. If we even were meant to get into these arguments, 
Did the Prophet وسلم, and the Salaf, meaning uh, beginning with the Sahaba would have brought these issues up. The Salaf, the Sahaba, they had to sleep in the source. They got those nusus, those texts, Kitabi Allah, Sunnah al Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they were comfortable with it. They didn't ask these questions. They didn't negate these 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 masa'in to sleep. And this is the creed and minhaj and methodology of Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Fi Kitab Al Kareem, Allah Al Ladhi Khalaq Al Samawati Wal Ard, Wa Ma Bayna Huma Fi Sitta Di Ayam, Fi Sitta Di Ayam, Thumma Stawa Al Arsh." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and earth uh, and what is between them in six days. Then he rose above his throne. Allah said it about himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hadid, Huwa ladhi khalaqa samawati wal ard fi sitta ayyam, fi sitta ti ayyam, thumma stawa ala arsh. He is the one who created the heavens and earth in uh, six days. Then he rose above his throne. Allah said it about himself. Ahl Sunnah, we affirm that. And we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that that is from his divine characteristics. And likewise, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends. We don't know how. We don't make a likeness that descension is like us or like his creation. But rather, we affirm those attributes. This, is, this would be more truthful for you to, to argue this, O uh, Ashari, O Diobandi, O Naqshabandi, O uh, Maturidiya, O Maturidi, uh, or whatever creed that you adhere to, or men, men had your methodology or madhab in creed that it would be more honest in your criticisms to not claim that Ahl Sunnah does those things because that's in accordance with your intellect. But I just made clear for you that we just say what the Quran says and we don't ask how, we don't negate it, we don't distort the meaning to, to fit something that the Arabic language does not, uh, uh, does not have contained this meaning or uh, in, in, in other words because we have to make this hukum if we're going to make these uh, these rulings and these judgments based on our intellect they have to conform to the methodology of the salaf they have to conform to the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Sahaba and, and, and those who followed them we have to go according to their understanding on, on top of that Likewise, if we don't have something that is clear from that, we go back to the Arabic language. This is the minhaj in fit. This is the minhaj in, 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 in Islam. In fact, in the sciences of Islam, this is how the ulama, they deduce a lot of these uh, issues. They go back to the meaning in the Arabic language, not in the English language, not in the Spanish language, not in the French language, not in Korean language, not in Japanese language, not in uh, the Punjabi dialect, not in Urdu but rather in the Arabic language because the Qur'an was revealed in Arabic. And this is not to take away from those other languages, but this is to make the point. The Qur'an was revealed in Arabic. The Prophet ﷺ was an Arab, and his language was Arabic. On top of that, likewise, is that the fact that the meanings, and when you deal with usul of fiqh and, and, and these things, this whole science is built, really, uh, it's built based upon the Arabic language, that those kawaid and those principles, because usul of fiqh, what is it? In fact, it's uh, the science of terminologies in fiqh, more or less. You know, <clears throat> when you talk about am khas, you talk about all of those, those things, you talk about mujmil, when you talk, and you talk about uh, mub, uh, mubin or, or, or what have you, all of these are dealing with terminologies and how you understand the text. How you understand those fiqh masail. So meaning, we have to go back to the Arabic language. We cannot say, estoa means estola. This is what the Ashari say. This is what the Maturidiya say, mostly. They told this argument, and most of the people now, today, who attack Ahl Sunnah from this, uh, in this manner, uh, regarding the creed, uh, in issues of creed, regarding Al-Asma'i wa Sifat, they hold this creed. And this is how they attack Ahl Sunnah. They say, no, estoa means istola, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it by force or whatever they want to interpret it to mean. But this is tahrif. This is ta'wil, facet. This has no delil for this. Why? Because you can't go to the Arabic language, bring me some other masail where, uh, where, where you can say istola in the Arabic language means istola. It doesn't. 
But instead, this is ta'wil in two ways. This is ta'wil ma'nawi wa ta'wil uh, lohui, or the two different types of ta'wil. Meaning that you've now changed the, actually, the istilah, uh, the or the, the term itself, you've changed the word. Then there's also the changing of the meaning of the word. So now you've done two things which are impermissible in Islam, that you've distorted the meaning of istawa. Istawa means to raise or, uh, you know, to, to go up and, and have irtifa. You know, it, it means uh, to, to go upward. So that is inherent in the Arabic language and meaning. So how is it now we can change the meaning or cut out letters to say it means estoa means estola because you can change it. If I had something to write it out, I can write it out to illustrate what I'm talking about when we're talking about estoa. Let's write estoa. Estoa. This is estoa in Arabic here. Hopefully it can be seen. Uh... <laughs> istoa, there, istoa. Okay, my writing is not the best. It, uh, that istoa, or, or actually it's istoa, isto, istoa. I think it's like this. My spelling, I think, is wrong. So I think it's like this with the uh, alif uh, maftu, uh, if you can see it. Anyway, now they've changed the letters. When you say istola, that means you've added. Instead of the the uh, where you have the the letters the aleph sin ta wow and uh, aleph aleph uh, mafturha you've now changed that and you've added a lamb to make it estola so then therefore they've changed the actual term itself on top of that they've made ta wheel facet in the ma'ana because you don't Fine, estola does not mean estola in the Arabic language. There's no similitude. Est, est, estola refers to taking something by force or bikoa or some qahar uh, uh, or, or like this. Allah kulihal, we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. We're not Najdi. We're from Seattle, by the way, Seattle, Washington, which is where... Uh, Microsoft is from, Starbucks Coffee is from, Boeing is from, so I'm not Najdi. Uh, also, Amazon.com is from there. Uh, this is where I'm from, and I'm not from uh, Najd, and I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we try to fear Allah as best as we can, and I hope that you will too, and make Tawbah for your attack on Ahl Sunnah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.